Okay, let's talk about waveforms. Now, waveforms is <clears throat> the opposite of the histogram, and not not fully opposite. But when remember when I said that we were com remember said, remember when I said that we were combining all of the data on the histogram and it was being displayed in a single like in a single graph. That's not what's happening here, and you've already seen it because I move my hands right. But if I put my hands up in this shot, you can see the data changing in the shot. Now, what this is doing is it's taking the image and it's going from left to right and displaying that information on the screen. Now, this waveform is uh, not colorized. If you go to DaVinci Resolve or if you're using Lightroom or you're doing whatever, there are other waveforms that have all the colors kind of stacked on top of each other. Don't have this option here, okay? We only have ba the, the basic waveform information, but this is good enough to kind of understand what is going on. Now, how we can use this information is instead of left to right, black to white, okay, well, that rhymes, it is, it is the full frame is left to right. So all the data, you know, along the frame is being shown. And then it is blacks on the bottom and whites on the top. Okay, so now we can see inside my shot where in the picture we are getting hot spots where the information is getting lost into the into the shadows or into the blacks and where things are overexposed or underexposed and we can see it in real time from left to right. And so if I've got a computer screen, for example, right here that is um, blocking part of the shot and it's all black, You'll notice on the bottom of the left-hand side of that uh, little waveform that there is a large cluster of white indicators on the bottom left-hand side. That means that on that side of the screen, there's a whole bunch of black hanging out there, okay? Whereas on the right side, okay, over, he um, over here, I'm sorry, on the right side of this shot, is that right to you? That's right to you, right? On the right side of this shot, you'll notice that there is no data in the black, that it's more in the middle. And this is why having a neutral background is super helpful because gray is generally shown, you know, properly lit, gray is generally shown in the middle of the screen. Now, what do you notice about the side of that on the right? Is that that, the, that data kind of slopes down, doesn't it? It kind of goes down into this range. Why do you think that is? Well, remember what I said at the beginning of this in the overview, I've got a shadow. Look, there's a shadow right there. And so it goes, it's a little bit more dim back there than it is maybe over in this region on, on the side of the wall. And so on this waveform, it shows that there is less light or it's a little darker in this section of the wall. And so you see that on the waveform kind of sloping down. Now, when you're doing, now, I mean, this is overly simplified because I'm wearing a black shirt, I'm wearing a black hat, I've got my skin tones are exposed but everything else is black and gray, okay, or white in this instance. So this is not a super dynamic waveform. However, the information that you can see where my body is sitting in the frame, okay, so this, this data right here, if you're looking at the waveform, that data is kind of stretched all over the scheme, like all over that waveform. What you don't necessarily see is data at the absolute extremes where I am sitting. Okay, so we, you know, I've got a black shirt on and that, that true black, this portion of my shirt is going to be that information on the bottom of the, of the waveform in the middle of it. But as we kind of go up, you can see the data that's scattered. So my skin tones is all of this data that is kind of scattered in the middle. Now, I wish I could make this thing larger for you to see. However, this is the large option. <laughs> okay, this is the small option and it's it's pretty pretty hard to see any useful information this way but you can select it on the web ui as large but this is as big as it gets okay now you might say well it's really still really hard to see well it's free so chill so here is the actual waveform information and you can see that my skin tones are in the middle range ish of the shot which is good that's what we want it means that i'm not having harsh light bouncing off of my skin and washing me out and causing data to get lost. It's a pretty well lit shot and it's it's kind of relatively in the middle. So we could use the histogram for this information, right? 
blacks on the left, whites on the white uh, on the right, and then that information in the middle and trying to get a halfway decent bell curve. Or we could use something like a waveform, which shows that information in a different way. And if you're comfortable this way, but it shows us active. First of all, this is a live waveform. So it shows all this information in real time, but then it shows it from left to right. And so when something happens <clears throat> on the right side of the frame, we see that information show up in real time. And my, my hand is not overly exposed. Oh, check that out. So my hand is not overly exposed when I'm facing the camera, but if I point it at the light, Look what happens at the top of the waveform. You can see the data showing up at the very top because my hand is basically, the, the camera is not able to see any useful detail or data because I'm, my hand is overexposed. And so it shows up at the very top of that waveform as basically pure white, which means that all I can see is white. I can't see anything else, okay? So... The extremes, you want to kind of stay away from the extremes if you're just trying to set this up as a generic shot. But again, subjective. It's all up to you how you want the shot to look. And so there isn't a hard and fast rule. And you're going to get production guys that come in and say, oh, you you never, you should never have data at the bottom of the waveform. Or you should never have data at the top of the, everything should be in the middle. Or on the histogram, you're supposed to have a big, nice you know, mountain, it's, that is, there, there is no authority out there that is going to come out and arrest you if you do this differently. This is just giving you data so that you understand what's going on in the shot. And if you're like, I can't figure out what I need to change to get this to be more in the middle of, you know, in, in like middle ground, you can open up one of the scopes, in this case, the, wa the wa uh, waveform, excuse me. You can open up the waveform and you can see, look, the majority of the color in my shot is in the middle of the frame. So that's good. And now the subject, me in this instance, is a little underexposed on his shirt and on his hat. Okay, that data is right here. But even though my hat is at the top of that frame, the black data is at the bottom of the waveform. Okay, so the black actual data from that's that's going through the camera is at the bottom of the waveform whereas the white portions of my skin are going to be further up on the scale so it's going to be further up and you can see as i move my hand and you can see the exposure on my hand you can see that data changing in real time higher up on the graph okay so if i turn my hand and it's overexposed you can see that that information is above that kind of middle line meaning that it's getting whiter and i'm losing information the brighter it becomes. And same thing on the other extreme, by the way. The darker it becomes, the more data you lose. So there you go. Okay, so waveforms is super helpful. Hopefully that makes a little more sense in understanding exposure, but understanding uh, how to read this. Now, as a fun little exercise that I promised you I would do, let's turn on the colors. So now we get the party going on. There is a lot of data here that you may see if you're using this, if you're using your colorized backgrounds, in real time and watching the waveforms. Now, I think it's kind of fun to watch the colors change and watch the waveforms move in real time. However, it's not very useful, <laughs> okay? Because although it's fun and it's a fun little exercise to do after you get everything kind of set up, um, it's not really true to what is going on, especially if you have a revolving color like this, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, you, you still can use this data. Okay, so it's still helpful that I can see that the majority of the information, the colorized information, is still in the middle-ish range of the waveform. But it, it changes, and it's revolving. And if I want to balance, if I want to truly balance this shot, I need to probably set this up with a gray background just like this without it changing too much. All right, let's get this correct. Okay. And what's cool is with NDI 5, with the scopes option, you can turn on the scopes on multiple cameras and make sure that they're all relatively the same. Okay, that's that's the advantage of this. Okay, so if you turn on the colors in the background, it's going to be super confusing and it's going to introduce a lot more data that's not going to be particularly useful to you. You may learn, and and as I have, that when you turn on your lights, you need to turn them down a bit. So typically my lights run like pretty bright. They run like, I don't know, 60, 70%. Well, check out that waveform now. Like it is, it's very different than what we were doing before, right? Because the background is is blown. There's so much more light going on. 
So when I'm balancing this, I, I go way down to basically where I have a gray background like this, and that gives me a very true color uh, for what I want to do. And then I introduce color later. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, let me make sure I covered everything I wanted to here. Um, yep, that's everything that I wanted to cover on Waveform. So hopefully that's helpful. And certainly gather and uh, collaborate your questions in the chat if you have any additional uh, questions. This is just what's available on the Bird Dog cameras for free as a part of your purchase and update to NDI 5. This comes along with it. And so that is a huge free bonus. Uh, go ahead and go look at devices that just do scopes and check out their prices. That's how much money you save by updating for free your bird dog camera.